Hello. Hello, my darling. How are you? Very well. Good Happy New, New Year. Year. <laughs> I know it's been a few days in, but you know, it's an opportunity to rethink about things. And that's what we're doing today, Lucy. What are we talking about? We're talking closet confessions. Can you shop fast fashion responsibly? Oh. Yes. And I thought the way I could illustrate it, Lucy, is by putting on a rail my favourite things I have ever bought from Zara. Of course. But I have something here which is actually from 2003. For me, it's not about where you shop necessarily. It's about the importance you attach to each garment that, that comes into your wardrobe, into your life. Is it there as a transient journey maker or is it there as a good friend to stay? And I think that's how can we find clothes that can be good friends to stay in our wardrobe for a long time? Yeah. That's to me the purpose. So whether your budget means that Zara is an expensive shop for you or whether you find that Primark is an expensive shop for you or whether Harvey Nichols is an expensive shop for you. We all have a different price point, Lucy. Yes. You know, and I think you and I in our life have been through times when different stores, which maybe might now be accessible, felt really expensive at certain times. Definitely. Yeah? Definitely. So I don't want to judge people by where they shop for their low, mid and high but it's about how you can make something feel really loved immediately it comes in. And also how, under what emotional conditions we go and shop. Okay. Okay, so oh. there's lots of things there. So I'm going to illustrate all of those things by just talking about these clothes. Okay, yeah. do you want to tell me what you're wearing? I'm yes. wearing probably one of my favorite things to buy from Zara. And this is the most fastest of the fast fashion things I buy from Zara, but they last quite a long time in my wardrobe, and it's their £19.95 jumpers. I always buy the round neck version. I always get a size medium because I don't want them too clingy. I keep these about three or four years, and I rotate them so they don't get dirty, and I actually hand wash them um, just so that they you know, last longer. Yeah. But they're stretchy, they feel comfortable. So so that's like my hardy perennial from Zara. The jeans are something else. So I've talked about these jeans probably very often. So much so that a fantastic woman, because I talked about my fear of losing them in a suitcase, found a pair for me on Vestiaire Collective. Yes, lovely Kathy. Lovely Kathy. And she gave she she brought them as a gift to me. And I, I can't say that was such an unbelievably thoughtful gift. But I think what I loved about them, and I have never found a jean like it since, is they're high-waisted, but they fit me here, and they're not too tight here. They're long enough that I can wear a, a stacked trainer underneath. I feel ageless in them, and whenever I don't know what to wear, and I sort of do my jacket and top and trouser look, I end up wearing these. I think more and more people are selling Zara on places like Vestia Collective, especially really covetable pieces. So I think some of the things I've got here are covetable. So if you think, oh, I love it, go and search for it. Go and give it a new home. That's, that's my kind of call to action today. How do I start? Well, I had a sneak at this rail yesterday and yeah. I couldn't believe that some of these things were from Zara. I know, they're, they're just... I, one of my favourite things, if I just, I'm just going to randomly go in now, but this is a, this is a um, blazer. I wear this blazer so much and I think it just, the texture I adore, I can wear it with a white shirt and it will look really chic or I can just wear it with a jumper. It looks it's worse now with a jumper, but it's just a little bit more than a navy blazer. Mm -hmm. And the cut is so good and it just has two buttons like that. Um, I wear it with a tight trouser or a loose trouser and I've had this probably for about eight years. I treat it with more reverence than this very expensive blazer I'm getting rid of that I've had four years. Oh. Which cost me about 300 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Just shows it's not about the cost, it's about the preciousness you feel about an item. Mm -hmm. I'm actually gonna put on now one of my favorite, sh I think I, yes, this is just, this is a killer shirt. This shirt is probably four years old. And I got two of them because I loved it so much. This is the other thing. When I, when I find a white shirt I adore, I buy two. Yeah. So one of them got a stain on it and I had to get rid of it. But what I liked about it so much is that it had a little front that tucked in. 
and the back hung out. And I think when you want to do that sort of layering look or just make something that more interesting, I love a shirt which has that split up the side so you can elongate your leg at the front and be more casual or hide a bit of an extra bottom at the back. Uh, so great shirt, I think it was 29.99. This is a cape and I don't know anyone else who ever got it. But this is a cape from Zara Whoa. Um, and I just find it so beautiful and I love the applique here. It really is about those colours. It's that grey marl with the darker grey, a little bit of taupe. Just to me it's incredibly chic. This is at least 10 years old mm -hmm. and I keep it well. I keep it on a wide fat chubby hanger because on a thin hanger it will lose its volume and it will look a bit sad. So. Oh. Things like this, how you keep them is quite important. Where do you get your fat chubby hangers from? I get all my hangers from Amazon. So these fat chubby hangers here, I get from Amazon. And it depends on the space in my wardrobe, but things that are soft definitely need a soft hanger. And all my shirts, they can go on thin hangers. Some of my coats, let's digress for a second. Like these are my Celine coats. I'm loath that I'm having them outside, but I haven't got any more room. But I tried putting them on thin hangers and then I thought, no, I can't do that because then if I don't wear it for a couple of years and I bring it out, it will feel very tired. Um, whereas these thinner fabrics, I can put on the thinner hangers. One of my latest buys. Okay. This. Now, buying things that are a classic. So leopard has become a classic. It was a trend for many years, but it's now a classic. So. I always feel, always buy leopard, and you'll never feel it's something that you're just buying for that season. And this, to me, is probably the best cost per wear thing I have ever bought from Zara, because I know that the future cost per wear is gonna be incredible. It's 29, it was 29 pounds. And it's like, it's like faux suede, feel it. But it's a nice faux suede. Oh yeah, it's lovely. Isn't it? It's like, yeah. And they did this plain, and it didn't look expensive. It's even got pockets. It's a really good size leopard. I can wear it with other leopards. It's a great throw on indoor, outdoor jacket. So when I think, does it have a place in my wardrobe? This is the, the question you ask yourself. Do you need an indoor, outdoor jacket? Do you have a lifestyle where you really want to, you know, have that elegance that a coat gives you, but wear it indoors? Do you have that occasion? I do that all the time and it's, it's my go-to because um, I'm also rushing in and out the office so much, but I just want to always look very dressed and sometimes if I'm just in a top and bottom, I don't feel that dressed. So that's why this sort of jacote is so convenient. Yeah. Um, and it has no buttons, which means to me, it has less chances of being identified by a certain time and style. I think as soon as you put buttons on things, whether it's one or two or three, you define its era. Yeah. So I love the fact it's buttonless. Nice, yeah. that's a good tip. Yeah. Each year, Zara do these wool coats and they're kind of sometimes, this year they were less structured and they had a raglan sleeve. But five years ago, when I got this coat, um, or four, four years ago maybe, four summers ago, it didn't have the drop sleeve and it's just got the perfect proportion. This is a very well-behaved coat, but they will do it every year. And I just think the colors are interesting that they do them in. So I then, the following year, I got it in yellow and oh. I got orange and green too, which I haven't put on the rail. I just kept the yellow on, but it didn't have the drop sleeve either. Yeah. This year they did a drop sleeve, which didn't suit me so much. So I didn't get it. I yeah. bought it and I took it back. I always wear it feeling it's an expensive coat. So if you put something on and you feel something about it, you will project that about it. So, you know, if you feel what you've got on is cheap and costs you nothing, you will treat it that way. And it's about treating clothes with such respect, irrelevant of their cost. Zara two years ago did this jacket and I remember putting it on and thinking I love this jacket because it has what I call a Balmain sleeve. It's that straight shoulder, sorry Balmain shoulder, that straight shoulder. This was an extra small so even the, the bigger one it was a broader shoulder but really classic and modern at the same time. Yeah. You see again no buttons Lucy. Yes. You know. Oh, there's a theme running. There is a bit of theme running. So that they did two years ago. And I also liked the way it went in here. Do you see there's a yep. seam there? So really flattering to wear and give you a waist in the proper place. Even had little pockets. It's actually unbelievable. That's a high street jacket. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Because look at the texture. It's beautiful. Yeah. And depending on how you wear this, you know, if you wear sequins like this, 
with a little camisole and against your skin. I always think they look cheaper than if you wear them against a white shirt uh -huh. or against a fullness of some fabric underneath. I just think they need to be backed by a fabric. Yeah. Okay, and then this year, da -da 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 -da, they did this one which was also, but I think this might have been Zara Ward. And this jacket, I think a lot of ladies who follow me bought this jacket and I'm so glad they did. But again, do you see that shoulder? Yeah. Similar. You can see a bit more of the shoulder pair, but I don't mind because it's like full metal jacket. It's not sequin, it's metal. And it's just more interesting. It's, you know, there's so much sequin. There was a sea of sequin in ASOS and in Zara and in Manga, all these stores. So it's kind of, we were too much. And so I, I think I bought this because I thought this isn't quite sequin, but it still has a reflection of a sequin jacket. It gives that wonderful lift to your face um, that nothing can do. Even makeup can't do as much as, you know, a reflection of a, a mirrored jacket, basically. And it has one little hook and eye here, which I never do off. But the same again, they haven't done the side seam here across, but it still just goes in a, a good place. And little pockets. Little pockets. Little pockets. Great design. You know? Good, good design. Too. Yeah. Um, Do you think you could um, live off your Zara Braille? That's think... really interesting, Lucy. I mean, <laughs> I'm thinking if I look at outfits, I think I could. I mean, trousers, I haven't put so many on here. There are some really great trousers from Zara. The culottes that Lucy and I wear, the yeah. black side fastening culottes, I have pairs of those, haven't put them on. I want to start with my first piece I bought. Mm -hmm. um, and this was, I mean, you can just look at the detail here. They interfaced it uh, with a little bit of silk. Wow. You know, I mean, there were, I think people say sometimes it's gone downhill, the quality. But I think I still find things, and I'll show you something now where I, I think that you will still find amazing things. So this obviously is way too small for me now, but it's being saved for Lila, all right? But it's just, it's such a pretty little piece. Mm -hmm. I used to wear this over dresses all summer long and mm -hmm. I loved it. And I think the only thing that's happened to it is it's become more cream over time. So if anyone who's watching this has a great um, answer, because somebody sent me a fantastic, or didn't send me, they told me about a fantastic product to use on trainers to make them white again, this fluid. So I'd love to know if somebody has tricks for making yellowed clothes white again if they're lace. Love oh. to know that information. Look at the colour. Yeah. That. It's, su it's such an amazing colour. And I think finding things that are the perfect colour, if you find that colour and it's your perfect colour, it doesn't matter where it comes from, you're just so, you know, this is my favourite way of doing a sort of burgundy plummy aubergine shade. That velvet's just gorgeous. Yeah. And with velvet, I have to say what I haven't done well here, but I've done okay, is these are very good hangers because they have a fabric inside. So when you hang velvet, you really don't want to get too much on the front here, which shows that it's been on the hanger because it will mark velvet. Oh. So I quite like that these are fabric inside. So when you put that around the trouser, it won't mark. Oh. Let's talk about Zara being inspired by other people. Yes. Should we just talk about that? Yes. So Rixo is a lovely British label who were known for sequin dresses. But I tried many and they were always too high waisted for me. Mm -hmm. And then I saw this in Zara and I put it on. It comes with a belt exactly the shape of this and it fits me better than the Rixo. I and love this dress. It's, it's a great dress. Yeah. And it just, you know, that dress to me, with all the detail, with a little the little detail of the net here with the slightly a-line sleeve so you know if you feel your arm is bigger it's going to be more fabric over your arm at the point when you feel it might look big and it will make your arm look smaller um it's just a neat fit this there's nothing bad about this dress they've even you know because when the belt goes on which is the shape of this they've even put that little bit here so the belt sits so beautifully oh i was wondering it. what that was yeah okay um and that was, I think, 89 pounds, but in Rixo, that would have been 300 pounds. Yeah. At least. Then they did a version of kimonos one year, about three years ago, and I got this, and it was a dress, but I didn't like it as a dress. So what I did is I cut off, this is where I changed stuff around Zara. It had like a tie here, no, a tie here that went into there, and then that went there. And I just, I didn't like that. Yeah. So I just cut it off, and I wear it now as a jacket. I bought this 
last year or the year before, I haven't worn it. I haven't worn it yet, but I'm putting it on now and I'm thinking, and I never thought when it was hanging here, because it hung here for a bit, that I would get rid of it. I just knew it would come out at some stage and play. And this is the time it's going to come out yeah. and play. In fact, it's going to come out and play today, and I'm going to wear this today. It's fab. Because it just is divine. I'm and trying I'm... to see, is it paillettes? It's paillettes. It's, uh, it's tiny little paillettes. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that makes me happy. This has got to be one of the best coats I ever bought from Zara in terms of quality. Um, and it's got that sort of teddy bear fabric, faux fur, teddy bear fabric inside. It's like faux leather. Oh. Um, it looks beautiful with dresses. It looks great with, with trousers. It's just such a good coat. It's a great coat. It's black. It's black, but you know what's interesting about it? Come up close. It's not flat black. No, it's and not. And you know we discussed this before yes. about if you can have a black texture that absorbs the light and pushes it back out, which this will do because the pile is quite deep. Yeah. It's not black black. It's not black black. It does have yeah. that, those reflective qualities. A little bit. Yeah. Trini, how do you spot a classic? Interesting. I think, to me, classics are about cut, colour and pattern. I mean, every all clothing is about cut, colour and pattern, but it's something that you've got to feel... If it's a classic, you can kind of wear it with quite a few things. Mm -hmm. If it's something very fashionable, it will only go with certain things. So I think that defines a classic somewhat. Um, I would say that you've got classic classic and you've got what I call future classic, if okay. you just wanted to define it. So classic classic would be that navy blazer. It's, you know, a one button blazer, as much as we've had all different shaped blazers over the last few years, a one button blazer has always been there. Mm -hmm. So I feel that's a proper classic and an investment. Um, as I said before, buttonless things are classics to me. Uh, so anything that's buttonless. Um, and then prints that are a classic. So leopard is a classic print. Um, check is a classic print. So check was in this last winter, but check is always in and out. And so I bought this um, from Zara last two years ago, I think. And I might not wear it this year. I haven't worn it this year, but when I feel black and white and I want to wear the look and it's not perhaps when it's in fashion, it's sometimes when I want to wear it. Yes. It's not always when everyone else is wearing check. Okay. That's the other thing too. Because, yeah. you know, that's how Leopard to me became such a classic because I would just wear it when it wasn't in fashion. And then people say, is Leopard in fashion again? And I'll go, no, it's, it's a classic. Mm -hmm. You know, think about it as a classic. Yeah. So would you say that you shop trends or you shop for what suits you? I shop for what suits me. Yeah. For sure. I mean, I, I, I think that I stopped shopping trends um, fully in my 30s and now intermittently I might see something that's a trend and be inspired by it. And when I'm in a shop, think, oh, I love that because I've always loved that style and now it's in fashion so I can buy it. This is a classic. So a lot of women, I, and I haven't worn them this season so much, but I think those who know me more than a year know that I worn gilets a lot. and. I think this was probably, if I was to ever have a clothing collection, I would copy this. But I chose to put this one on the rail because it feels uh, far more expensive. It's got this sort of faux fur that I've had the Chile probably for eight or nine or even 10 years, I can't remember, at least eight years. Mm -hmm. And I wear it, you know, it has pockets as well. It's navy here and black here, so it goes with so many things. I wear it with wide leg trousers. I love the thick belt at the back. Yeah. There are so many merits to this piece and it is a true classic and I can just wear it with a polo neck or wear it with a fab shirt or wear it over a jacket. My favourite black and white jacket. This is actually an inspiration from uh, Stella McCartney. Yeah. You know, and I just thought the structure of this is so beautiful. It reminds me a little bit of Balenciaga because they've done this very, you know, hourglassy kind of shape of jacket. I then had to buy, I have three of these jackets because I was so scared that they get dirty or I'd lose them. And I just, <laughs> I just, in the summer, I wear this jacket every two or three days. This, you know, they do sequins oh. and they do really great sequins. I love this because it can kind of change the texture. Oh. So. I just play with it. So some days I have a full on sequin and other days I have a white top. And I adore the shape of this. I wear this with these jeans. 
It always makes me feel good. In fact, I'm going to put it on right now. Okay. I'm just feeling the inspiration to put it on. Okay. I just put it on because I just had to put it on. Because look at that. Look at that joy. Look at that joy. I can just do that. I love to play with clothes and have fun with them. So you literally can make it a different top. Transformation clothes at their best. Buying a cheap bag, if you're a bag lover, is difficult. But there are bags I have here that I covet more than some very expensive bags I have. So this is one of them. And I think what I loved is the combination of the violet purples with the orange. Yeah. Really pretty and unusual. And I wear it with a specific outfit. It was probably 1999, but it makes my outfit. You all know how much I love that little pearl bag. Okay. And in the summer, I adore wearing that. And I still will, and I'll always wear it. Rainbow, It's this is such a cheap bag, but I wore this in India over expensive dresses. And I remember thinking, it just makes me happy, this bag. So, you know, I think Anya Heinmarch is the queen of the rainbow bag, but Zara, if you can't afford Anya Heinmarch, it's fantastic. This is a homage, isn't it? No other store inspires me as much. When I take women for a makeover, you know, I, I go into other stores and I feel disappointed. But um, the, the biggest bugbear I have is sizing. Just consider that not everyone stops the size 14, 16, and when you do XXXL, all you've done is you've made the XS even smaller and you've just moved everything up. You haven't actually created a bigger size. Yeah. And also, do women want to be defined by XXXL? Really? Exactly. You know, so, so that's my biggest, biggest bugbear. And um, apart from that, I will probably never stop shopping there. And I think for this year, I'm gonna really make that effort, Lucy to buy and think where do they have a place? And even though my wardrobe is huge, because I, I dress every day to inspire other people and to inspire myself to do stuff, I, I always think there's a little, little gap sometimes for something. <laughs> oh, oh, always, <laughs> always, of course. Trini, thank you so much. All right, done. I'll see you later. You too, bye. Bye.